Nitesh Dile and welcome to In Conversation with Tibet TV. This is Sakina Bhatt. Today I have with me a very important political personality who has held various positions during his time in UK Parliament. He is a Conservative Member of Parliament for East Worthing and Shoreham. He became Chairman of the Parent-Infant Partnership UK Charity in 2013 and was the Parliamentary Undersecretary of State for Children and Families. He is also the co-chair of the UK Parliamentary Friends of Tibet. His name is Timothy Lofton. Welcome to the show, Mr. Timothy. Thank you, Sakina. It's a privilege to be here. So you are here in Dharamshala, and uh, what brings you to Dharamshala, the exile home to His Holiness the Dalai Lama? Well, we're really pleased to be here. I've come with two other members of uh, Parliament from different parties. So there are three of us from three different parties, the three main parties, and uh, we have come to show our support for the Tibetan Parliament in exile, for the Dalai Lama, and for the Tibetan uh, cause. So I co-chair the uh, all-party parliamentary group, which has many members. So we are just a small representative of the great support there is in the United Kingdom for you and your cause, and that's why it's important that we're here. So you've been to Dharamshala after 10 years. So what changes do you see? Well, I was last here almost 10 years ago, and there's a lot of things going on here. I'm, we've been very in, impressed. There's lots of building, the, uh, the research that is going on, the changes that the Sikkim has, uh, has brought, but above all, the, the determination and the energy of the Tibetan people uh, here is stronger than ever, which is so impressive, and that's why it's so important that we come here to show our solidarity and our support for you and your, your colleagues. So you even had an audience your, with your delegates, with His Holiness the Dalai Lama. So tell us more about the audience. Well, we were very privileged to uh, have an audience with His Holiness the Dalai Lama this morning. Um, he last came to Parliament in 2012, and we were able to host him there. And we very much hope he will be able to come back to, to Parliament, because there are many, many supporters in the United uh, Kingdom. But we spoke at length with His uh, Holiness, obviously about the situation in Tibet, about the constant uh, human rights abuses and the fact that we want to do as much as possible to put a spotlight on the human rights abuses. So we raise it in Parliament, we raise it with our ministers, we raise it at the United uh, uh, Nations. Um, and it was interesting also, His Holiness mentioned climate change and the importance of environment and the environmental damage and destruction that is going on in Tibet, which is such an important part of the globe, controlling so much of the water supply for 40% of the world's um, population. And I think people who perhaps don't know so much about Tibet, but have a real interest in the environment, need to know more about what is going on in Tibet and the effect it will have uh, on not just Tibet or China, but the whole world and on climate change as well. And the, the His Holiness was very engaged with that, and I think that's a really important subject to raise. So right now you just mentioned that His Holiness had actually come to UK 2012. So there was this huge uproar in 2012 when he came there, and uh, the UK government had banned two ministers from meeting with His Holiness mm -hmm. the Dalai Lama, one of them being you. So tell us um, more about this unfortunate incident, and what is the scenario now? Well, I think it's a, it's a sign of what pressure behind the scenes China is able to, to bring, and it's important that that is exposed. So I was a minister in the government under David Cameron at the time, and another MP, uh, Norman Baker, who is the president of the mm -hmm. Tibet Society uh, and a long-term supporter of Tibet, who came here with me the last time I was here. Um, we were due to have lunch with His Holiness, hosted by the Speaker of the House of Commons, because we were ministers, the government said, that we shouldn't attend this um, lunch. And we were very disappointed, and we said, hold on, you know, this is, does not look um, good. Anyway, in the end, so not to cause a diplomatic incident, we didn't attend the lunch. Um, but in fact, the, uh, the day before, the other minister and I secretly met the Dalai Lama at the Albert Hall, where he spoke to thousands of people anyway, so we still met the Dalai Lama. And afterwards, later on, when I was no longer a minister, I spoke out, uh, and there were television programs, to expose the influence that China exerts behind the scenes on, on MPs, on government, on local councils, on businesses in the UK and in the West, to say, if you question human rights abuses, if you raise the subject of Tibet, we will not do business with you, and all these threats. And that is wrong. And the way 
uh, to deal with those threats is to expose them and to stand up to them. And then China might get the message that it cannot go on treating the subject of Tibet and the abuse of the Tibetan people in the way it has for so long. So that's why it's very important that we speak out about this. Also, Tibet uh, remains largely close to the foreign visitors, and China is always very conscious about who comes to China mm -hmm. and uh, the information that is brought out to the outside world. So they can go to any measures to protect the human rights record. So yeah. how do you address this issue to the UK parliamentarians and to other global platforms? Well, that's why it's very important that whatever information we can get mm -hmm. through the Tibet Society, the international Tibetan um, organizations, and from the brave people from inside Tibet who smuggle out film footage and other information and the important work that goes on in um, Dharamsala, that we give a platform to it. So we will organize debates in the House of, uh, of Commons at international conferences. We will speak to our ministers, to the foreign secretary, and to officials in the foreign office department and also to speak to the British ambassador uh, in China. And I know officials from the British embassy in Beijing have been trying to visit uh, Tibet so they can see for, them, see for themselves. But it was interesting that last year, the Foreign Affairs Select Committee of the House of Commons, which consists of MPs of all parties, very important committee, wanted to visit Hong Kong. And China would not issue visas. So this looked absolutely ridiculous. So it was a legitimate visit to Hong Kong by parliamentarians, fact-finding to discuss with ministers and other people. They were not allowed to go. And I think that did a lot of damage to, uh, uh, to China. So we are now pressing to say, if you have nothing to hide, we want to come to Tibet. And there are many parliamentarians, and I would like to go and visit Tibet for myself to see for myself exactly what is going on there. And we will keep pressing at China to allow us to go and visit Tibet at first hand. And the longer they deny us access, then the more uh, ridiculous their cause is, and it more it seems that they are hiding the truth of the repression that is going on within Tibet. So with Brexit, do you think that a UK's uh, association with Tibet will change? No, I think Brexit is, I'm afraid, a very big subject in the UK at the moment, but I think one thing it will not affect, and that is Tibet. So. Brexit will affect many things, but you have no fears. I supported Brexit, so after Brexit, we will still be fighting as forcefully for the case for Tibet as ever. So what inspires you to champion the cause of Tibet? Well, I think, in fact, I've been a member of the Parliamentary Tibet Group for all my 22 years in, uh, in Parliament. I've been a member of the Tibet Society for many, many years, and it was the first demonstration I ever went on as a student in support of Tibet to the Chinese embassy in London when I was just a student many, many years. And friends of my family adopted some Tibetan refugees um, as well. So I've always had an interest in the cause of Tibet. But you cannot be interested in the cause of freedom and justice without realising what's going on in, in Tibet. So the two things are, are synonymous. The cause of the Tibetan people the cause of the Tibetan nation, the cause of Tibetans' heritage and culture uh, and language is synonymous with the cause of freedom and justice and, uh, uh, and liberty. And that's why all people should take a much closer interest to what's going on in, uh, uh, in Tibet today. Okay. So how does your family feel about your association with the cause of Tibet? They are very supportive, and I'm, I'm really pleased my wife was able to, to join me. And she did not know as much about um, Tibet, Tibet, so she has learned an awful lot, and she had the privilege of meeting His Holiness this morning and, and the Sikkim and, uh, uh, and others. And so she is now, I think, very, very supportive of, uh, of Tibet. And our children as, uh, as well, they see the injustice of what goes on in, uh, in China. And uh, so they are as, as forceful, as I think, as I am in being at one in supporting the Tibetan people. So finally, what are your impressions about the Tibetan freedom movement and where do you see it's headed in the future? Well, I just think the, the, the Tibetan freedom movement and all those who support the cause um, of Tibet, but mostly the t ordinary Tibetan people, either inside Tibet who are having to live under the boot of China, or those people who have risked their lives to come here and living in freedom and democracy uh, in Dharamsala, 
they are a huge inspiration to people across the world. This isn't just about the cause of Tibet. This is about a people who for 70 years almost now have not given up. And I think, as I said at the opening, when I came here 10 years ago and I m meet many Tibetans and we host them in London, the passion and the passion, uh, passionate cause uh, which they uh, support is an, an inspiration to, um, uh, to all of us. So I will be going back to Parliament with my other parliamentarians and we will redouble our efforts to make sure as many people as possible see exactly what's going on in Tibet and we raise at the highest level that China needs to understand it must change and that the people of Tibet deserve to be treated better. And that's what we will spend our time supporting. So you've come here after 10 years and today you came to Central Tibetan Administration. You saw the little Tibet, you met with Si Kyong and you also met with His Holiness the Dalai Lama. So how was your experience on the whole? Well, it's been wonderful to, um, to come back here. And as I say, we meet many Tibetans coming through uh, coming through London and they tell it and some of them who've been in Tibet and have heard the first hand accounts and they've told us some terrible things so it's just really good for us to be here and to see ordinary Tibetan people and to show them um, our support and that we are just three parliamentarians of many many others who are who are supportive and as I say it's an inspiration to see in really difficult circumstances the incredible work that's going on in, in Durham Salah and I think what inspired me most of all is that we were said that, that, that Tibetan people are not looking for sympathy. They're not looking mm. to be the victims, but they want people to join them, to join us in the, uh, uh, in the cause, because it is a just, uh, just cause. And I think that resilience and that determination is hugely inspirational to, uh, to all of us. So it's been fantastic. I'm sorry we have to go back home tomorrow because Parliament reassembles, and I'd like to spend more time and, and come back more often because the, the Tibetan people are wonderfully generous in their hospitality but hugely inspirational uh, in what they stand for. Thank you so much Tim for giving us the time. It was indeed an honor to have you here with us today. Thank you. The pleasure is mine. Thank you so much for watching and see you in our next episode of In Conversation with Tibet TV.